Hey, this is Gary Seegers. And this is Chris Giannini. And this is the Winning Cures Everything podcast. Chris, my brother. The Supreme Court on Tuesday agreed to hear a case for legalizing sports gambling in the state of New Jersey, which could, theoretically, then legalize it basically at all casinos in the United States. Now, first off, could you imagine how awesome a sports book would be at any of the casinos down in Tunica? Oh, yeah. March Madness, the Super Bowl, all these great sports Forget events. Forget those, just a set, like a good Saturday night. Yeah, no, it'd be like awesome. Like during the football season. That's right. Or or a big-time UFC fight. Like, I think about it. That place would be absolutely slammed every time there's a big game or a big fight. Like, I remember I was down at the Horseshoe back in August of last year, like right when we had started the podcast, and I was amazed there was not one casino in the entire area that was showing the McGregor-Diaz fight. And I was losing my mind, so I had to drive like 40 minutes back up Dollar Branch, and I got here just in time to turn on the fight, just in time. It didn't make any sense to me. Now, if Horseshoe or Samstown opened up a sports book down there, like our wives may never see us again on those weekends. Like, I'm, I'm serious. Like, you and I, would, we'd broadcast live from down there. We just, we just open up the truck gate and yeah. do it Set up shop. in the car. That's right. That's, there is $150 billion in illegal sports gambling in the U.S. alone. Now, this has always been the argument with, like, the legalized marijuana crowd. But imagine what states could do with tax money from legal sports gambling. Like, there's already – think about all the scholarships and all this different – and I know that I'm going at it. You're laughing because it's like, we don't want that. We just want to be able to gamble. Like, but think about all I the already, scholarships. I already gamble. The, exactly. I like to shop local. That's what I'm saying. I'm okay with it, my boy not, not having to pay taxes. You get my point, though. <laughs> I get your point. No, tax money. Yeah. It goes towards scholarships. Better, it can go towards... Better roads, isn't that what they always tell us? God bless America. Don't we need some of those down here? Well, it, that's not really what your tax dollars go to. That's what they tell you. That's what they tell you. But it'd be nice. But it, there's so many things that I'll donate people... donate some of mine. Well, there's so many things that people could take advantage of. Yeah. You know, that from, from that tax money. It could generate money. a lot of revenue. Yes. Nationwide. All it's, over it, the place. People talk about cutting education budget and all this kind of... Like, if you're pulling in money like that, Legalize weed, legalize gambling. We that stuff that people do problems. all the time. Yes. God. So here's, I will tell you that at one point in time, when the casinos opened down in Tunica, there was a huge push to try to get sports books. Yeah. And a lot of some individuals that I know lobbied unbelievably hard. Because Memphis is probably one of the biggest bookie towns in the country. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it used to be much bigger, but it's it's huge. It's one of the things in the country that actual point shaving took place, got caught, and and brought down a whole chain of people who mm-hmm. who I know and am extremely close to. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I just well, a lot of it had to do with you know Memphis was a, a hotbed years ago for like organized crime. Yes, and that's where a lot of those goes people into. I know. And I'm close to. But yeah, you. I mean, you get the point. So it, yeah. look, here's let me let me go through the full rundown. Okay? okay, so the reason this is all going down: New Jersey Governor Chris Christie passed a law in 2012 that legalized sports wagering at the state's casinos and racetracks. Right. So the deal is, Atlantic City has completely fallen off from what it was years yes. ago. It's a toilet. Vegas, however, is just booming. Like it's growing every year. There's always something going on. But Vegas or Vegas is completely different from Atlantic City. Like, it's, it's a toilet. Like you said, it's completely different. There was a series of lower courts that said the law was in conflict with the 1992 federal law called PASPA. Now, have you heard of this? No. This is the Professional and Amateur Sports Protection Act, which prohibited sports wagering outside Nevada and basically, to a lesser extent, three other states, right? Like Connecticut, I think, can do, like, March Madness pools and whatever. So the Supreme Court agreed to hear the case. And... With a minimum from some of these sports leagues like NHL and NFL plays in Vegas, like right outside the strip. Uh, I'm still over the NBA state should be legalized. Like this law is a real chance of passing now, and a decision is expected in 2018. But the argument in the case is not to talk about the advantages, you know, like tax revenue for states or the money no longer helping fund the organized crime like we were discussing. 
Instead, it's going to focus on whether or not PASPA unfairly grandfathered in for states at the expense of others, which violates state sovereignty protections under the 10th Amendment, which it absolutely did. Yeah, it, I was about to say, it, it absolutely did. You can't hear that and know that it didn't. It's like, why does Nevada get to, get to do this and profit? Yes. Like, profit immensely off of it. And none of these other states, where casinos are popping up. It. Yeah, other casinos are popping up all over the country. We've got them in Philadelphia, Mississippi, in Tunica, Mississippi. They're down in New Orleans. They're, I mean, it, it, it's everywhere. At Shreveport. Yeah. Shreveport's got it. Like, come on. And, and even if we're just talking about casinos, you know, because the state of Alabama doesn't legalize any gambling. Mississippi doesn't legalize, like, a lottery system, but you can have a few casinos here and there. So there, there are ways to go about it. If you just do it in casinos, just imagine the boom that it would bring in. You know, like the, the, the northern part of Mississippi has been upgraded so immensely since Tunica opened up all those casinos. It is, it is a complete life changer, you know? And it's not just like one county or anything like that. It is the whole state. Oh, absolutely. No, the whole north half of Mississippi is, is, exactly. has flourished from it, from the revenue from it. Yo, I, yeah, in oh, Philadelphia, yeah. Mississippi, and Biloxi, Biloxi's got several of them down there on the water. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. You know? So this is a, a huge thing. Like, it, give us a prediction. Like, is this thing going to pass, you think? I think it will, and I think it will because of the argument. When you bring up the Tenth Amendment and you bring up the, the you know, the unfair acts of, of – picking certain states to allow certain things and not picking others. But even if it doesn't, I think what Chris Christie's doing is right. Yeah. As the governor, let me just make this ruling. What what has the governor done in California? We're going to legalize pot. What has the governor done in Colorado and in Washington and in like 19 other states in the union? We're going to legalize pot to some degree. It's still a federal crime, yeah. and they don't give a damn. It's my state. I'm the governor, and we're going to do this. And we're going to tax it, and we're going to make the money. Yeah. And That's guess what, goes. feds? You don't get none of this tax dollars yeah. because you won't legalize it. So guess what? You don't get it. Now, they open themselves up to raids and things like that, and that's just the cost of doing business, and I understand it. But but just because you get raided doesn't mean that oh, you're going yeah. down. No, you're not going down. You just, you just pay them. All the raids are in California back in the day when the weed shops were getting raided, they're just payoffs. That's all yeah. they are. They come in, we break all your stuff, we take all your money. You leave. It's just a robbery, but it's done by the government. <laughs> it, anyway, I I think it will, and I think for the first time in a long time, people are making solid arguments. Yes. You don't have to always just argue what you think people want to hear. Make the best argument for your case for you to win. I there agree. There might be 90% of the people in that room, other than the Supreme Court justices, might not know what the Tenth Amendment is. It's your job to educate them that day. To well, that's their the, the lower courts, like the smaller courts. Mm-hmm. Like there were three or four of them that all ruled against yes. Chris Christie. But I think once the Supreme Court decided they were going to hear it, like it kind of changes there's a chance. No, I absolutely think there's a chance. So this this could be monsters. Our wives may never see us again on the weekends. It'll hurt a lot of local business, though. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, yeah, it will. All these guys that are used to making that money. I still shop local. Yeah, yeah I figured you probably would. And I, I don't think anybody's going to do anything to try and stop it. No, they haven't for years. You know, it's and not like I, go it, to, I was. I the was IRS told, don't come out to yard sales. No. You know? Look, I was, I was told while in college from an individual that was involved in dropping shoeboxes of cash off of the University of Memphis, <laughs> Memphis State back in the day, that. As long as you're not cheating, nobody cares. But if you cheat, they will hunt you down. They will mm-hmm. find you. So if you're going to do it, do it straight up. Exactly. And that was the lesson that I learned at a young age. Still holds true today. So now I just, I'm just i kind of fearless. I'm like, look, I'm, I'm being on the up and up. Let's just go. Let's just go. Let's so, do it. So anyway, I, I hope it does pass because I think, I think it would be better for us. I think down in the south where we have a lot of small casinos – College football and NFL football is huge, huge down here. And there is so much revenue that these small little states aren't touching at all. 
Oh, agreed. Agreed. I, I still, to this day, haven't figured out why the state of Alabama, who has such an educational issue, like raising money for education, why they haven't gone to a lottery. And it's all based on oh, morals yeah. they're, and they're, whatever. They say they're just too, they're too uppity. Yeah. They're afraid of it. They're, they're not moving on with, with the times. No. And, you know, you can understand from somebody's philosophical background, like, the way that they want to do, like, their principles, basically. I understand that. But... I disagree times are with changing. them, yeah, but times I understand. Changing. So the state of Tennessee did it, and, I mean, flourished. Mm-hmm. They are flourishing off of this yeah. stupid-ass lottery. They're making a lot of money. Exactly. Tennessee, uh, uh, Mississippi, they put they put the casinos in Tunica. Tunica was the poorest county in the country. Yeah. Not in the state of Mississippi. Well, they're the poorest county in this poor state. And now, not that Tunica's any great place to visit or anything like that, but they got a lot of money. Yeah. They got a lot of money. It looks awesome down there. Yeah, no, good it, place it, to visit. I would say it's one of the nicer places you can go outside of Vegas and actually find casinos that are cool, that yep. are nice, that are fun. With good golf courses and also, I mean, it's awesome. Yep. It's it's a good good time down there. This is Gary Seegers, your co-host and owner of Winning Cures Everything, the best sports blog and podcast in the South. There are a ton of ways that you can connect with us. First, check out the website winningcureseverything.com. Second, give us a like on Facebook, facebook.com slash winningcureseverything. Third, follow us on Twitter, at winningcures, or myself, at ProSevereGary, or at Chris B. Giannini. Four, email the show, winningcureseverything at gmail.com. Fifth, download, subscribe to, and review the podcast. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, SoundCloud, Google Play, and all of your favorite podcast apps. We'll have new shows up every Tuesday and Friday morning along with different articles throughout the week. Remember, winningcureseverything.com.